Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, the board met before this meeting in executive session for the purpose of discussing the employment history of a particular person. So we've already done the pledge and we've already done roll call. Um, our first order of business is appointing a district clerk pro tem. Um, and I'll go ahead and read this in. Uh, be it resolved that in the absence of the district clerk, the Board of Education hereby appoints business manager Ms. Catherine Platt to serve as clerk pro tem for this meeting. May I have a motion, please? So moved. A second? Yeah, all right. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Great. Lovely. Thank you for your continued service. Ms. Platt. <laughs> for those of you watching at home, she's very familiar, I think. Um, all right, now, uh, before approving the uh, agenda for this evening, I'm gonna recommend adding an item to the agenda, and that is the appointment of the district clerk. Uh, be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education hereby appoints Ms. Megan Shields to the position of district clerk, effective August 24th, 2022, at the annual stipend of $11,625, prorated for the remainder of the 2022-2023 school year, with an additional $1,000 to be added if a second referendum is scheduled in any school year. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Lovely. Congratulations, Ms. Shields. We look forward to continuing to work with you as well. Um, great, so uh, opening up the meeting now. I, um, the next meeting of the Haldane Board of Education is scheduled for Tuesday, September 6, 2022. We'll be meeting in the auditorium. Um, we were going to be in the auditorium this evening, but there were some AC problems, which we certainly hope will be solved by the time everybody else arrives. Um, if not, we're with you. Um, I wanted to note that today, August 23rd, is the Congressional and State Senate primary election day. The polls will still be open until 9 p.m. If you're listening or watching via YouTube, you can, I won't be mad if you close the tab and uh, run over to the Cold Spring United Methodist Church over on Main Street in Cold Spring. Um, those are all my comments. So. Dr. Bernante. Just a few. Welcome to our board members. And again, congratulations to Ms. Shields. Uh, just a reminder that uh, school starts next week. Uh, for those who may be watching, we're welcoming our staff back on August 31st, and students are scheduled to begin with us on September 1st. I want to thank uh, Tim Walsh and our, his facilities team for all the efforts that have gone on. Uh, not only to get our the inside of our school prepared, but there's been a lot of uh, facilities improvements around our campus, and I know that Tim looks forward to sharing those with our board for the yearly walkthrough that we typically do in the fall prior to a board meeting to be scheduled, but uh, a lot has gone on on campus um, to improve our infrastructure, and I know that's going to lead to a hot, higher quality of life on campus through the through the school year. Uh, but most importantly, we're looking forward to welcoming our students and staff back. Several staff members were making their way back on the campus over these last two weeks and uh, had a chance to connect with a few of them today. And that's a theme that we're going to highlight leading into the school year, not just uh, internally here at Haldane, but I noted uh, I got a letter from the school uh, PTA leadership. Uh, who highlighted the very same thing, which is uh, highlighting the importance of connection, um, especially over these last few years where there's been a bit of sense uh, of disconnect for uh, due to COVID restrictions and other matters, the importance of uh, connecting um, both uh, personally, uh, interpersonally, uh, but also connecting to the meaning behind our work, uh, which can be easy to lose sight of when you're in such a stressful uh, period of time as we've seen to have been in these last uh, few years. Uh, I did uh, want to note that uh, Ms. Jammin facilitated a great session for our kindergarten, kindergarten, incoming kindergarten students and their families today on campus. And uh, Christine is facilitating a new student scavenger hunt. Uh, so a scavenger hunt on Friday for any student who's new to Haldane uh, will be going on. And I think that's great too, a great way for the kids to connect with one another, but also to meet different people around campus. Uh, and um, we're looking forward to welcoming our new families to Haldane as well. Uh, Sean, I have some more to report with uh, Catherine towards the end of our mm -hmm. meeting, so I'm going to 
pause there unless there's any questions from our board. Yeah, just a quick question. Good. How many incoming kindergarten students do we have this year? We arrived at 38. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So, yes. And in line with what you were expecting? Yeah, so we okay. look at our enrollment yep. study that we did a few years ago, and everything seems to be as projected, which I know was a point, uh, a question that our, our board had probably that first year of the pandemic, because yeah. uh, we had just completed the enrollment study. But all of the trends that were noted at that in that study seem to be holding. Um, uh, that being said, uh, you know, the farther we get away from it, the more the yeah, potential sure. for inaccuracy to set in due to changing dynamics in the community. So at some point in the next year, uh, two years, I would say we should probably do it again uh, just so we have updated figures. But it um, seems to be on uh, course with what was projected to be this year. Three sections? For yes, time. three sections. Okay. All right, moving into communication from the public. Uh, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and read the whole paragraph since it's the beginning of the year. Uh, the Haldane Board of Education desires and values input from the entire school community. The first public comment session is reserved for comments on any special presentations or active agenda items. For those who wish to address the board, please sign in, state your name for the record. Please keep your remarks to three minutes or less. Disparaging remarks and discussion of district personnel are prohibited. Although we do not engage in dialogue, we are listening. Please leave your contact information with our district clerk, Catherine Platt, for prompt follow-up for the board president or superintendent. I can already see a, a paragraph edit that's forthcoming there. Um, it doesn't appear that we have anyone from the public here this evening, so uh, we'll move on to information reports. Uh, these are the information reports here for review. Again, these uh, reports are gonna be presented for approval and discussion at the next business meeting as consent agenda items. And then uh, moving on to consent agenda minutes. May I uh, have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. Great. Uh, any, any discussion? No? All right. Uh, then uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No? All right. Moving into uh, our committee minutes. The only thing here are policy committee. I don't know if there's anything well, to report the, there. Um, we haven't met, we're going mm -hmm. to meet soon. Um, and yeah, I think there's just basically what we talked about. We've got the audit. We have a plan for our next meeting. Um, we're working on the things that we want to be working on, so yeah. And just to reiterate, this year on, our, on the committee, it's both you, Peggy, and, and Maggie, Maggie, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah. Okay. All right, moving into consent agenda, financial. I may I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Uh, just a comment. Oh, sure. I just wanted to make note, uh, Sean, that mm -hmm. under financial, um, item seven imp uh, includes the approval of our agreement with the Putnam County Sheriff's oh, of Office right. uh, for the resources for a school resource officer, or the support of a school resource officer for the upcoming school year. Uh, Deputy Tolvi is uh, scheduled to oh, continue with us going into next school year, which we're really happy about. Um, uh, Deputy Tolvi has done a lot to immerse himself uh, into our school community, and we've had some transitions in that mm -hmm. role in previous years, so uh, I'm pleased to report that. And just a reminder that um, as we ended last school year with some more uh, uh, safety-related concerns on a national level, there were some uh, school shootings um, uh, that really captured uh, the attention. Deputy Tolvi and I had met with some parents who had concerns about, well, what would our response be in such a situation? Uh, how they and what other supports are in place? Is it enough? Where could we ask questions? Um, and how could, uh, how could those questions be answered? What's the appropriate form for that? We didn't feel that the conclusion of last school year was the right time, just with all the other events that were going on. But we did make a commitment to facilitate such a forum uh, at some point at the beginning of this school year. So date to be determined, it will likely be end of September once we get beyond the back to school nights, um, end of September, early October. Uh, that will include, uh, obviously, me, Deputy Tolvi, um, our representative from Alteris that helps, helps uh, assist us on school safety and security matters, um, our uh, mental health professionals uh, from the school, um, our clinicians, if you will, a building principal, uh, just to, again, provide a space for, to hear about what we're already doing. Um, across a few domains, um, uh, and then also what continued concerns or questions that our families may have about safety and security on campus. I'll say that uh, Deputy Tolby's been a great resource in his time here, as 
has uh, each of our school resource officers that we've had the opportunity to work with in previous years. And uh, to reinforce, they're not just an officer on campus. Um, and as the agreement outlines, they're here uh, to meet with our students. They liaise effectively with our families over the course of the school years. In many situations, uh, Deputy Tolvey and his predecessors were serving as a bridge between families and mental health supports within the community. Uh, so um, he's been a, a good resource to us. I'm glad our relationship is continuing and more to come on uh, in terms of our engagement with families at the beginning of the school year uh, around that topic of safety and security. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Remind me, Deputy Tolvey joined us at the end of the 2020 or the beginning, right? Was that? <laughs> say COVID times continues to be a yeah. blur. Deputy Tolvey was with us at the end of the 2020-2021 school year right. through last school year. Right. Yep. Lovely. Great. Thank you, Dr. Bedante. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No? Great. Moving on to consent agenda personnel. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Nothing? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Moving on to, let's see here, consent agenda. Are we moving on to unfinished business? Yeah. yeah. Unfinished business. All right, we're going to move on to unfinished business. On Tuesday, July 26th, uh, the board gathered in retreat at Winter Hill. Uh, the discussion was facilitated by Lynn Allen, who's the assistant superintendent at uh, Putnam North Westchester BOCES, who's the first of uh, two retreats uh, focusing on district and board goals, among other things. Um, it was also a great opportunity, one of the only opportunities the board has to sort of meet each other in an informal and friendly way, and it's always nice to, you know, go through all of the exercises and the workshop games that we do in those circumstances, but we did them. Um, but one thing that we do need to do is discuss dates for our follow-up, because there is some, uh, there was some conversation about maybe revisiting our board goals and solidifying some of the district goals and communications. So um, it'd be great if, you know, if anyone wants to share about their experience at that first day of the retreat, but also look at your calendars for what uh, next might be. I think, Dr. Benante, you said that we were waiting on some dates or some possibilities from Lynn and her associate. And Lynn reflected that back to me and said, She'll work to make whatever dates the board's available and, uh, and to accommodate those. So my um, recommendation is we could identify a first date and then maybe have a backup Great. just in case. That Great. should cover us. So uh, sometime, ideally, if I know September is a busy time, but if we can meet uh, in September, I think that would be most helpful to the board and, and, and to our administration. Great. We've done these uh, these kinds of uh, 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 retreats on the on the weekends because I, I'm being sort of very responsive yeah. to. You know, some of us have jobs that we don't we don't get to leave at any time Monday through Friday. <laughs> some of us do. Um, so, um, do we want to start with, or do you want to maybe put out a, a Saturday, a couple of Saturday options to begin with in September? I look I'm looking to you, Ezra, um, and probably to you, Peggy, because I know you have a travel right. calendar. So we sometimes we've done it on Saturday and that would work. We've another option is to do it on a Tuesday that we don't meet. But I didn't. I think the question was I we didn't know if that would work with people's work schedules because it means sort of starting at 4:30. What? It's, it's just later for me. You know, I mean things are just fixed. You know, but I can okay. always be back by. You know, 3:30. Um, okay. Usually, oh, okay. I can get back by 3:30. Great. Um, so any we're Tuesday. We're looking at probably three hours. Just right. So. Oh, Everyone's yeah. aware. Yes. Yeah. So, start at four. We'd end at seven. If four we were to, to do it on a weekend, oh, yeah. start at nine, end at noon. Yeah. Well, if we're looking at September, I'm going to go ahead and throw out the 20th as my first option. So Tuesday, September 20th, if that's what we're looking at for. A, I think, but we have, don't we have a meeting now? We have a meeting. We do. Before? Oh, we don't want to do it up to it before. I would that's recommend an off week Great. Uh, right. as opposed to trying to run right up to a meeting. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, there's a chance I'm going to be out of town on the 27th, like from like the 22nd to the 27th. Um, so. I could do the 13th. The, the 13th works for me or Saturday the 17th works for me. And I actually really have no preference between a weeknight or a weekend. Oh, that's Maggie's birthday. Which day? 
The 13th. All right. Hey. Oh. That's a well, sacred we're not day. Not, we're not that's doing a sacred that. day. We're not having a retreat you have children, on your birthday. And the, that's the day that your children celebrate you. So I don't want to take that <laughs> evening away from you. Hopefully, right? Um, uh, but you also offered up the 17th as a possibility? Yeah. I mean, I was just pulling dates out yeah. that seemed feasible. But, but I don't know if Saturdays work for other people. It's my son's birthday. Oh, my oh, man. Oh. I know. It's all, it all. Although, yeah. would the, you're gone the 24th? There's Maybe a, been- yeah, I think, I, th- I actually, I mean, to visit my mom, so it's not work, but it is when I told her I would be there, so. Not the 10th? The 10th. The 10th works soon, but. Yeah, as long as. Yeah, we can do it. If it's in the morning, preferably, that would yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. in the morning out by lunch. That's yeah. 12. How things work. How's that? What time? I, know, I think. Um, 9 a.m.? Yeah. 9 to noon. 9's great. Mm, 6 a.m. is even better. I was going to say, the earlier the better, but 9, I'll Come go on, with man, 9. We got young kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up anyway. Oh my God. I'll we, go 6 a.m. We, we, we don't have young kids. <laughs> <laughs> this might be contingent on Lynn's wild also, ideas about yeah. what 9 so o'clock looks only like. First date. But, um, yeah. You need yeah. a second right. date. The, um, the last. What about moving it to the, f- to the first? October, October the first is my birthday. Oh, that's good. Everybody in <laughs> their great. dang birthday. Look at all these wonderful birthdays. <laughs> what about then the twenty? What about the? Did we? Oh, well, in the twenty seventh, I'm, I'm afraid I might not be here. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't have to do it on a Tuesday. No. We could do it on a Thursday. We could do it on the 29th. If we're going to do it on the th- a Thursday, then after the eighteenth is fine by me. I can do. 22nd, I can do 29th. I can. Yeah. 22nd's good. No, 22nd's bad. 22nd's bad. Yeah. 22nd to the 27th, I cannot do it. 15th is bad for me. Yeah, I could do it. Do I say 29th? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be fine. I'll just push stuff around. Yeah, 29th. Yeah. Um, what are we looking at? I actually can't. I have a doctor's appointment that I've waited months to on get the on, the, on the 15th. 29th. 29th works. 29th. 29th, 29th it is. Going once. 29th is open. You, you there will have softball, Ezra. But that's I have softball. You do have softball. It's all the time. Sure you can that's right. Softball. It's all the time. Okay. And we'll say four. That, it's not just that. It's soccer yeah. now, too. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Four o'clock, Ezra, on the, on the 29th? Okay. Sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you. There we have it. Boy. That's, so, I, I was and sweating. If we do that it on during the week, it's going to be four to... Correct. Yeah. Great. Great. I'll confirm with Lynn and then confirm with you. Wonderful. All right. So then I guess we're moving on to new business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, actually, right. before we go on to that, I just mm-hmm. wanted to one more follow up about the board retreat. I wanted mm-hmm. to. So one of the things we talked about was um, new member, our approach to new member orientation. And I've chatted with Ezra about it. I haven't had a chance to chat with Maggie, who indicated she'd be interested in some more sort of new board orientation activities. It occurred to me, I can't meet with them at the same time, because that's a quorum, which is fine. Um, And so what I'm thinking about is I've ordered some books um, about being a better board member that I'm going to look at to help me think about some topics. I'm going to look at our calendar. I chatted with Ezra. I'm going to look sort of across our calendar of things that we do to try and come up with some things to to, to touch on. as and I talked about meeting quarterly. So for example, we'd meet before the budget, like when I, the budget planning process got started and before we do the mid-year superintendent evaluation. So in some ways this year is really a pilot of me thinking of really developing sort of what a list of, I, I, my, in my mind, what I'd like to end the year with is working in collaboration with Maggie and Ezra is a list of topics that we sort of, in a timeline for discussing them. I don't think there needs to be, in my mind at this point, there doesn't need to be specific content, there doesn't need to be readings, or, you know, anything like that, but really think about what are, what are the list of things that would be helpful for people to have conversations about. I'll use the resources to help guide that as well. So in addition to those, what I'm thinking are quarterly meetings, like conversations, um, being available to people whenever. So that's my plan, and that's really it. And if it doesn't work, we can change it for next year. 
questions, yeah. things that I wish I would have, you know, heard yeah, a little more about. That's, or, that's what so. I was really hoping with you, especially, and to some extent also with Ezra as time goes by, is what are the things that that need to be covered? And I really do see it. I mean, I mean, I've been on the board longer than anyone, so I have some level of expertise, but I really do see it as a collaboration of what are the kinds of topics that are really helpful outside of the training that people have. So that's it. I'm also interested in this document. I would imagine it's something we're going to make available to folks who would be interested in board service, because I think oftentimes uh, in, great candidates are reluctant to join the board because they just don't know what the duties are. And it's, in some ways, it's so that would be great if our audience is also, you know, potential board members and board candidates as well. So, great. All right. Any more discussion on? No. Great. All right. Moving on to new business. Ms. Biden. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the recommendation of the Committee on Preschool Special Education and Committee on Special Education as presented. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No? Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the agreement with the Putnam County Department of Health for the sharing of COVID tests for 2022-2023 as outlined in the attached agreement and authorizes the Superintendent to sign this agreement on behalf of the district. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No? Great. And I believe we've, uh, we're, we're at the presentation time We're back, right? yes okay. uh, so at this point each school year we begin to close out our books from the previous year and uh, I, ideally we have a fun balance <laughs> that we are uh, dealing with and grappling with how to uh, best direct those excess funds uh, Catherine and I have been working together over the course of the last few weeks to arrive at what that figure is and then how those monies could best be directed uh, we're going to pull up a brief overview here to give you some perspective of how we've handled the use of these funds in the past, as well as what our recommendation is for uh, right now as we look ahead uh, to the upcoming school year. Okay. So Catherine, with that, I'll allow you to pull those up and I'm just gonna stand at the podium just to give you a clear view of the screen. Catherine will lead the presentation or the discussion and I'll chime in if needed. Okay. Um, so the first slide that I made for you was just letting you know where we are as of the end of last year. So um, it's a good starting point for how it comes and where, and where we start from. So at the end of last year, our total fund equity was $5,160,930. And we had, I have a, them listed out for you, the different amounts that we had in our different reserves that we use. Um, we then always have our assigned appropriated fund balance, and then the last number were last year's um, in reserve for encumbrances for the expenses that we carried forward to the 2021-2022 school year. So we had an unappropriated fund balance at the end of last June of $1,037,095, and that's the 4% that we're allowed to have um, based on the budget numbers of unappropriated fund balance. And then I just, to make it easier to see the numbers, I just took all the reserve funds, put them together here, and it's, so it's the exact same slide as the previous one, except you know without showing each reserve fund as its own. Okay. This year, um, still waiting on on the audit to be complete, so there you know will be some closing entries and things, but we are looking at. Um, total revenues of $25,166,218 with expenditures of $24,793,459. So right now we have an excess of revenue mm -hmm. over expenditures of $372,759. So that's the amount that we will be able to use to increase our fund equity for this year. Oh, what happened? I I'm sorry. I think it was me. I'm sorry. Was it this mouse? It was that mouse. I'm sorry. It's okay. Let's try it again. Okay. Okay, so now our fund equity is increased 
by the 372,000. So our fund equity that we're anticipating at the end of for the end of June 2022 is 5,5033689. Um, we still keep the total reserves that we have. This number is different by just over $50,000 because we did use part of our liability reserve this year. Um, our assigned appropriated fund balance is the same year over year. The only time that changes is if we um, use any of our fund balance to offset the tax rate. But we are not recommending that for this year, so our assigned appropriated fund balance will stay the $645,000. We currently are showing $693,660 reserved for encumbrances. Again, that is money that we are carrying forward. It will increase the budget numbers for expenses that were encumbered as of this year, but we will be paying for in the 2022-2023 school year, which gives us an available fund balance of just over $1.5 million. And again, we're allowed to um, keep 4% of it, 4% of our budget undesignated, so that's the 1,088, leaving us with an ex excess fund balance of just over $412,000 for us to use um, in our reserves this year. Okay. I put together the history of what we have done for the past few years with our fund balance. Um, you'll see that we have once used it to adjust the tax levy, levy we do always put something towards covering our lunch deficit, um, the, the um, teacher retirement system we usually put it to, the tax certiorari, so when people come and have adjustments made to their taxes, we can um, cover some of those funds, our liability reserve, a repair, a capital repair and our capital fund, and then EBLAR, which is the um, benefit liability reserve for if there's a huge a buyout of an employee that we uh, are either unanticipated or it's just larger than we expected. Um, so that's how we've used it in the past. The top line is what um, Dr. Benante and I are recommending for this year. On the next slide we'll show we'd like to use $148,000 for our school lunch fund deficit. Um, over the past few years, we have been putting funds towards that and we've been covering prior year expenses. If we use this this year, we'll be, that will completely wipe out the current deficit that we have. Um, you know, we do know it's something that we need to look at about what, how we always have a lunch deficit, but we'll be starting from scratch. Um, we are recommending $100,000 to go into the reserve for the teacher retirement system. Um, Rates went up this year, they're always changing, we're not really sure, we're not fully funded in that reserve, and so it's a good place to put some money this year. Um, I'll go jump to the bottom. We're gonna replenish our liability reserve that we did use this year to put that those funds back in reserve, and then the remainder, we thought with the um, campus master planning that's going on, the remainder should go this year to our capital reserve fund. So, kind of sped through that, but. <laughs> That is what we recommend, and if you have any questions, we'll. Are we anticipating any retirements this year? So we're not yet clear on that. We've heard through word of mouth that we may have, um, I think at this point, at least one at the conclusion of the school year, but uh, the timelines with each respective labor group associated for notification typically fall in the winter. Uh, so that allows us to incorporate those anticipated retirements into budget development. So we'll have real clarity on that come end of January, February, right around that time period. Can you remind me what, what subsidy, if any, was made available to us through the state of the federal government for lunches over the past couple of years through COVID sure. and how's that changed? So uh, over the course of the past two years, if I'm not mistaken, Catherine, uh, lunch was fully subsidized. So there wouldn't be cost for lunch for uh, the students here. We would receive full reimbursement through the federal government for those Right. Uh, for those per for those meals that were um, administered uh, or provided, I should say, uh, that is not something that's continuing into next school year. Uh, we just received notification of that. Uh, there was 
thought that it may be right. extended for another year. It's not going to be. Uh, students who are eligible for free or reduced lunch will still be eligible. Uh, there's a process that those families go through uh, to demonstrate that need, and those are subsidized. Uh, but we had been operating under full subsidization for the previous couple of years. The issue for us, just as it relates to the deficit, is that our personnel costs right. that we're carrying to operate uh, food service program exceed the revenue that we bring in. And it's one of those, I would attribute this to more of a, an issue with economy of scale. We have the personnel that we need to run a food service operation. We're just not at a, a scale, if you will, that will either cover our entire cost or make it profitable for us to do so. Uh, Catherine and I have discussed that this is something we want to still uh, work with our food service manager to work with Nancy to still continue to assess throughout the year, you know, is there, are there particular times of the year where we encounter this, where this issue seems to arise for us more so than others in terms of revenue um, or lack of revenue? Um, is there anything more we could be doing to generate revenue in, in the cafeteria? We've been able to manage it through, through fund balance, but it, I, I think there's a responsibility we have to the, to the community to see if there's any further way we can control costs on our end or generate further revenue or other options that we may have. Um, so that's something we'd like to sit with through this school year and in order to provide you with more information for consideration uh, for the future. There is a significant shift. <clears throat> However, if I'm looking at 2017 and you know, 2016, 2017, and 2018, you're at, you know, 40 and 31,000, and then you're, you know, now you're bumping it each time. Uh, in the past five years, I mean, mm -hmm. you've, uh, it's jumped up quite a bit. It has. The one uh, thing we'll just note on that is 2021, I believe the, the deficit was so high, just a bit of an anomaly because we were not in operation for part of that year, but we were still, so we weren't generating any revenue. Um, but we were still, we held on to the staff, which was important to the board. Um, so we didn't lay anybody off, we didn't furlough anybody, uh, but at the same time, we weren't generating every revenue because for 12 weeks or so, mm -hmm. school was closed, or the campus okay. was closed. But yes, uh, it's, a con it's, as you're noting, we're concerned about the figure continuing to increase. And so just, ju just because I'm new, and, and I'm, I don't know the contract or anything like mm -hmm. that, so, uh, food service is carried by the school. It's not contracted out into no. a private company. Okay, got you. Thank you. And the one thing, so you'll, this is one of the things I, I think we've talked about in the past, but I don't know if we've talked about in the past couple of years. When we hear from the auditors and we get their report about, about our this finances, one of the things they typically note is that we are running a deficit in the lunch program, but that it's, a pre, it's pretty common. It's not, it's not, I, it's definitely something we want to continue to revisit, you know. I mean, the board historically has really liked the idea of, of not contracting out, of, of really like, you know, keeping it here with us and, you know, it supports a lot of jobs. But that being, not that it's not something for us not to worry about, but this is, it's not a problem that's unique to Haldane. It's a real struggle to support to, to feed kids, and it's, yeah. And I, and I believe the auditors also commended us for being dedicated year over year in terms of setting aside in the, some portion of the fund balance yeah. for that, that, because other districts don't do that necessarily. Yeah. So that and just to note back to Ezra's question, I'm sorry I didn't mention this before, Catherine, if you can just go back to the overview slide. If I'm not mistaken, even though you see us uh, in these years, um, Ezra, that, that slide uh, is a demonstration of the fund balance we're committing to offset the deficit. It's yeah. not a demonstration of what the deficit right. is. Gotcha. So to, to, to answer your question, but I think you, yeah. uh, you should have that information. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we can generate separate information just so the board can see what the operating deficit has been. We've carried the deficit forward. We're, we're allowed to. Uh, we're making a commitment this year to paying the entirety of it off. Uh, but I, so I can't answer, uh, um, fully respond to your comment or question because I, I don't have as reference here what the deficit has been each year. That's just what we're using fund balance to no, offset. Yep. Yeah, appreciate that clarification. Right, and we did in 2021, 
we did put more towards the lunch to cover the deficit because we did have, you know, we considered it a windfall year. We had some um, re non reoccurring revenue that came in, so it was a good year. But it has been that we have never offset the deficit. We have always just been trying to cover some of the prior years deficit so this this would be a new way to start looking at it is to be covering it at the end of so the year so you feel with. like instead of chasing it you know mm -hmm. year right. over year you're trying to get at the head of it and that's mm -hmm. why that number exists there for this correct budget. okay can you just remind me what are the restrictions on use of money in the repair reserve a repair reserve just requires a public hearing. There needs to be, I believe it's five days between the announcement of the public hearing and the actual public hearing taking place. Um, we can waive that if it's an emergency uh, situation, but there is, it just requires a public hearing. And it can be used for, uh, I guess, uh, two, other, two other slightly related questions. Those monies can be used for any sort of infrastructure maintenance repair type Repairs. activity. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And is there a limit on the amount that can sit in that reserve? Um, Do you know? I don't know of a repair. I'd have to. I can okay, double check fine. that and look at that for right. you. That's, that's fine. Yeah. And it looks like in, two, in 2017, 2018, there was... There was considerable instability, so we put money into repairs because we were anticipating um, that's something. That's for the replacement of the turf fields. Yeah, it was right a there. it was a decision that we made um, as we put it, you know, to know that right. at some point in time we're going to have to repair the tur replace the turf fair fields. And that's, and that's why the balance is, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly, the one reason I started asking because I remember the balance being high or, or the balance of that reserve is like nine hundred seven thousand dollars. Is that okay. right? Okay. Yeah. Which, the only reason that caught me off guard is because I was like, didn't we draw it basically all down, or a lot of it down to do the bathrooms, or is that capital? That was capital. That was capital, okay, cool, thank you. Just one more clarification question, Catherine, on capital, capital repair as well. Because of the size of our school, unlike larger schools, uh, our, ref our basically refunds or uh, rebates that we get back from the state are relatively limited, is that correct? Opposed to say a much larger school that may, when they do capital repairs or capital projects, they're doing, um, they may get reimbursed at much higher rates, 75% yeah. sometimes, school buses sometimes in the 90%, whereas we have to carry much more of the load uh, on ourselves. It's based more on the, um, your ARWADA figure. Uh -huh. Um, Repeat that. Change just for <laughs> relative those wealth. That, so, just uh, your, yes. the, the assessment of your community's relative wealth. Yeah. Um, so, size maybe not the key variable. Um, um, perception of relative wealth within the community. There is a formula uh, drives your reimbursement rate on uh, your financing. So, yeah. the rate you finance for any any capital projects that you have. Now, as we get further along in discussion for the campus master plan, we will eventually layer in a financial component where our financial advisors will come and share with you what that figure is and how much aid we will generate on the scope of project that we're looking to do here. And that will vary by community. So uh, we're going to generate I think our figure is gonna fall, and again, it depends on the type of space because there's different levels of aid depending on uh, mm -hmm. classroom space versus an auditorium, as an example. Um, so the, the figure does vary, but generally, we're gonna generate about uh, 30 to 35% aid uh, on, for every dollar. Uh, right. So 35 cents for every dollar, we're gonna get back in, in aid from the state. Yeah. In other schools, it could be much, much higher. Oh, it could be up to 60 yeah. or 70%. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's a factor that has to be considered here. Obviously, it's a unique, uh, I don't want to call it a constraint because it is money coming back in, but it, it is a unique variable for our community, mm -hmm. um, for sure. And am I thinking about it in the right way, just to say it basically increases your buying power by that by X, by I would, half? If we spend 35, if we spend 65 and the state spends 35, or is it is that I, incorrect? Uh, no, I would think of it that way. Okay. Um, uh, you know, there's That's other thoughts. Way Obviously, way there's that. other ways. Oh, I like that. There's okay. other ways to angle into that, but I think yes, you want to be mindful that that is money that's coming back to you, um, and you want to leverage that to the extent that you can.
Great. I just wanted to point out that the agenda that you've given us has uh, the numbers that are reflected here, but as of this afternoon, the numbers that were available on the agenda on the website differ. And I don't, there was probably an update late in the day because I, I did this Might like around 5 piece. p.m. We or did something the lunch like piece. that. So yeah. it probably differs by about $12,000 or so in that we decided to we did some shift fully here. offset the lunch uh, deficit uh, and pull that out of capital, yes. um, which is where those figures Great. would vary depending on what presentation you're looking at right now. Great. And yes, that was a decision we made this afternoon <laughs> or finalized this afternoon. So. Um, so we will respect it, yes. the paper. Okay, great. Yes. That's all I wanted to make yes, sure before. It should be you. updated on if you're looking at a current right. the current right. website. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. So we will be moving forward uh, if there unless there's any further discussion with the approval of the recommendations. Okay. okay. All right. Um, be it resolved that. Upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education hereby authorizes the use of excess fund balance for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2022, in the following manner. Transfer to school lunch fund, $148,000. Transfer to TRS Retirement Reserve Subfund, $100,000. Transfer to Capital Reserve, $95,000. Transfer to Liability Reserve, $50,000. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Nope. Great. All right. Moving forward. Okay. For the tax warrant, um, be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the resolution to confirm the tax rolls, authorize the tax levy, and approve the tax warrant for the 2022-2023 school year. Great. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. No. Um, and for the meeting dates, be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the following changes to the dates for their meetings as follows. April 18th, 2023 workshop meeting to Tuesday, April 25th, 2023, due to the requirement for all component districts to meet on the same date for the BOCES budget vote and election. Great. We have a motion, please. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Right. And moving on to our second opportunity for communication from the public. This is on all district matters. Uh, I don't see that anyone is eager to join us, so we'll forego that. Um, moving on to board reflections, if uh, anyone would like to. No? I want to uh, reflect and comment on my knowledge of the extraordinary trip that uh, Trustee Headland took to, to Ireland and how glorious it is to live vicariously through people who do actually take vacations after once in a it while. Was a, it was postponed 50th birthday <laughs> present for my oh. wife. So we, oh, we finally wow. got to do it. She, she did a wonderful sort of Facebook narration of the whole, the whole trip. So it was wonderful. <laughs> um, I guess I, I will reflect on uh, my my son Declan, who's going to be going to the fourth grade, is actually returning to campus or fully in just a few weeks, and he hasn't been uh, last year. He was homeschooled. Before that, you know, we were at home, and um, you know, we had, for instance, today our first uh, CSA meeting uh, as as a point of transition back in, and it was a really wonderful meeting with the new team, um, some familiar faces and and uh, returning faces, and we feel very hopeful about everything moving into the year and are excited to have them back. And I know that there are other uh, parents in the district in similar situations. And it just, even though we are living through the endemic at this point, it appears, um, I feel like we are all finding our groove and our rhythm in a way that um, I celebrate. And I'm happy to sort of fully be integrated back into the community sort of moving forward, so. That's great. Great. Dr. Benante. Just wanted to note that our, we're facilitating our new teacher orientation tomorrow morning, and we're looking forward to welcoming our new teachers and some new staff members as part of that. Um, my, I want to thank the um, uh, Faculty Association leadership, Andre McHugh, uh, and I will be speaking in the morning to our new teachers. Um, uh, we each hold various parts of this. Uh, our new teacher mentors uh, will be a part of the program as well. And um, just a point of reference for, for my remarks with the group will be our values work that we shared a little bit at the board retreat 
and talking a little bit about what that looks like in the actions of our uh, teachers here on campus. So I'm looking forward to sharing that work with them and very appreciative of the relationship that we have with the Faculty Association who co-facilitates uh, this day for our new staff. All right, well, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Great, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Great, see you in a couple weeks. Thank you. All right, fantastic, fantastic Sean. Mm -hmm.